I'd like to introduce Corey Kobe. He's an active member of the Extensive Reading Foundation and a dedicated advocate of reading. And he's based in Japan via Canada. And I don't know how many other stops in between. <laughs> but um, thanks so much for being here. And I will take that sake in Greece when you come, okay? Excellent, excellent. I'm looking forward to it, Rob. <laughs> yeah, well, I hope to finally meet you face to face. And I appreciate you being here. So thank you. We're going to get started. Remember, people have 10 minutes, and I'm going to start the official timer. All right. And take it away. All right. Um, so uh, I am here to talk with uh, with you about uh, a, a one particular approach to reading. Um, so I'm starting out my presentation with a question. Um, how did you learn to read in your first language? Uh, very typically, as you can see on my uh, on my first slide here, you read with your parents, your mother, your father, and then eventually your teachers or other relatives. Um, so it's a very natural process of reading where you're not studying, you're not memorizing. Um, it's not a grammatical kind of approach. It's a very natural kind of approach. And that is uh, the kind of reading that uh, I'm a big advocate of. It's, uh, it's something called extensive uh, reading, um, which is quite different than intensive reading, which is very common in a lot of academic um, settings. So um, in extensive reading, um, uh, Julian Bamford and Richard Day uh, came up in 2002 with um, descriptive uh, principles for extensive reading. And these are them here on the screen now. Um, the material should be easy. There should be a wide range of material and a wide range of topics. The learners should choose what they want to read, and they should read as much as possible. And uh, that means a lot of uh, reading, a lot of input. Um, so that's kind of a very Krashenite, uh, massive uh, input kind of approach. Um, the reading is usually uh, related to pleasure uh, and general understanding. It's not specific details and memorization. Um, and reading should be its own reward. Um, and the speed is usually faster rather than slower. And I'll talk a little bit more about speed later on in my presentation. Um, and it should be individual and silent. And teachers are there to orient and guide their students. And when possible, teachers should be a, a good role model for their uh, students and also be a reader themselves. So what we're really talking about is silent, sustained reading. And you can see pictures here of my students. Uh, the picture on the left here is actually of my students that I just happened to be walking past and I found a whole group of them just sitting in the hallway. This is not a class. This is not a classroom. And they are reading. And uh, they've chosen the books that they want to read. So um, here in this slide, what I'm talking about is um, two different kinds of um, cycles. On the left, we have uh, what's a very common uh, kind of uh, situation where um, readers read slowly, they don't understand very much, they don't enjoy reading very much, so they don't read uh, very much. And because they don't read very much, they read slowly and it kind of goes in around and around like that. Um, so on the right-hand side, what I'm talking about here is reading uh, faster, and then you understand more, and then you learn to enjoy reading, and then you read more because you enjoy it. And then you go around in this very uh, virtuous kind of uh, circuit. So this is why speed is very important in uh, reading. Uh, and I'll talk a bit more specifically about the uh, research about um, speed reading. So uh, here we're looking at some of the uh, research related to extensive reading. And um, originally back uh, around uh, 16 or uh, so years ago, there was a, a researcher, Sakai, who proposed that a million words should be a goal uh, for readers uh, in order so that they can read independently and read uh, quickly. And um, in uh, 2010, uh, a publication came out, uh, Nishizawa and his colleagues came out and found that uh, around the 300,000 word threshold, uh, readers really started to take off in terms of their TOEIC performance. And here in Japan, TOEIC is really sort of the benchmark 
but uh, we think that that is also applicable to uh, TOEFL and IELTS and possibly the Cambridge uh, tests as well, but there hasn't been any research uh, really done on other tests. So I'm talking specifically about the TOEIC here, and then a very recent research that has uh, just been published uh, this year uh, within a single semester, uh, the researchers found at the bottom here that at the 150 word uh, or more level, that there was a, a, a statistically significant improvement on uh, TOEIC scores. And they're talking about a, a reading speed of 160 words per minute or an increase of nearly 30 words per minute over a semester. And that's a really uh, important number, uh, the 160 words per minute. That's faster than a lot of our um, uh, language learners are reading at, especially at the beginning. So speed is really critical. Um, and so um, the 150,000 word uh, benchmark has been uh, uh, is, is relative, relatively new. Um, this, this slide here is showing you the program that I'm running here, and I've been doing it for three years now, and I've got uh, anywhere from about uh, 67 to 90 students in a, in a, in a, in a year. And uh, this is in a single semester. My students are reading anywhere from about uh, 80 to 90,000 up to uh, well over, uh, well over uh, 800, uh, 700,000. I can't see the slide here, but um, anyway, quite a, a lot of reading. And um, the red line at the bottom here is something very interesting. That is here in Japan, the uh, average number of words that a language learner uh, meets in six years of secondary school, junior and senior high school. So the, clearly in six years, the input, the amount of English that they're reading is not nearly enough to be beneficial in terms of uh, seeing achievements on, on TOEIC scores or, or other achievement tests. So really uh, what I'm talking about in a single 15 week semester is for my students to be reading a lot more. And over the two years, actually my students will read uh, at least a half a million words and many of them approaching or exceeding a million words. So uh, a lot of input. Um, this is uh, a couple of things. Uh, the main uh, thing that you're seeing here in this slide, this is my uh, reading library that my students have access to all the time. And uh, it's a self-access library. And those carts, uh, we wheel one of those into our classrooms and uh, the students can check out books. They've got uh, library cards that they self-scan. And uh, I've got a, a library management system that you can see in the top right there, Readerware. Uh, it costs me a, about 50, uh, 40 euros to purchase the system. And then I've barcoded. You can see the book on the right-hand side. Um, all of my books are uh, barcoded. And the students check the books out and check them back in. And that's one of the places that they can uh, they can access the books. My university also has um, uh, books in the library. I've got about 5,000 books in the library. And I've got about 3,000 books in our English. Uh, uh, sort of English commons that the students can access. And all of these books are, um, there is a, a quiz, uh, a comprehension quiz that the students do. And if you see on the bottom left, M Reader, the quizzes are free and they can be accessed by anyone, but you need to buy the books. Um, so that is uh, often a very big problem. So uh, there is another solution if you don't have a library. Um, I'd like to introduce this uh, platform here called X Reading. And this is actually uh, something that my students use in addition to the paper books. They do their paper book reading or they have access to ebooks. There are hundreds of ebooks on this particular uh, platform. It's an, like an LMS designed exclusively for extensive reading. And uh, I've been using it for three years and it's worked very, very well. But it is a paid system. Um, it runs anywhere, depending on your country. Uh, it's under $5 a month, sometimes even uh, quite a bit less than that. It really depends on uh, where you're located. And it is available now worldwide. So of course, yes, that does cost money. Um, so if you can't afford even that small amount of money, there is another solution, which is something called ER Central, Extensive Reading Central that you see here. And this is an absolutely free website for teachers and for students. And there are hundreds, uh, or actually over a thousand uh, readings here. And you can do speed reading, you can do listening, and you can do um, just regular uh, readers uh, for free online. So if you don't have access anywhere else, this is a really good place to uh, start your reading uh, library. So I've just touched on a few very, very uh, important points very briefly. 
if you are interested in extensive reading, uh, I highly recommend getting in touch with the Extensive Reading Foundation, ERF Foundation, extensivereadingfoundation.org. And um, you can see the website uh, web address down here at the bottom. Every two years, we have a world summit on extensive reading. Uh, last year, we had it here in Japan. And next summer, in August, we're having it in uh, Taichung, Taiwan. And uh, all of the global leaders in extensive reading get together. We have about 400 uh, plus scholars and 150 to 200 presentations on extensive reading. And I would be very, very happy to uh, meet with you uh, in Taiwan if you uh, have the chance to visit there. And if not, uh, we've now got seven different uh, affiliates worldwide, and we're looking for more. Uh, you can see here uh, Indonesia, the Middle East, uh, Japan, of course, Korea, Vietnam, and we've got more countries coming up. So if you're interested in getting a group together, we would love to help you. We would love to reach out and uh, connect with you. So please do get in touch with us through the ER Foundation. Um, and that is basically all I have to say in a nutshell, but there's a tremendous amount of literature out there, and it's a fantastic approach uh, to reading. So please do give extensive reading a try, but uh, read up on it and prepare for it first before you uh, delve into it, because it does take uh, a bit of preparation and uh, planning. So that's it in a nutshell, Rob.